Oui. Let us pray. Dear most kind and loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come into your house safely, be with those who are on their way. May you hasten their footsteps and may you bring them here safely. And as we are about to sing praises unto your name, may our praises go up and the blessings come down. Continue to be with us, continue to bless us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Above all power, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, and there's no way to measure what you were.
forward team song
Good night, everyone. If you feel blessed, say amen. amen. Uh, are you feeling blessed? <laughs> I thought all the world was going to break, break down when you were a, break up with a bigger man. If you feel blessed, say amen. amen. If you feel happy, say glory to, glory to God. At this moment, we're going to need done, and then we're going to pray separate for God to continue, for we to be connected to God, and for the Holy Spirit to continue and get in our intention. So we're going to pray individually as we need done. And then at the end, I'm going to finish the other prayer. Padre amado, que tu mejor te rodeo cielo, santificado y glorificado tu nombre. Gracias por el poder maravilloso que tú nos das a poder vencer las tentaciones. Síguenos bendiciendo y ayúdanos a mantenernos con, con, conectados contigo. Holy Spirit, keep guiding us and lead us into, into temptation. And you know we pray. Amen.
God bless you. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone tonight? <laughs> there is peace in Christ when we learn of him. Feel the love he felt for us when he bought our sins. Listen to his words. Him. Through the streets of Galilee to Jerusalem, men the broken hearts, dry the tear-filled eyes. When we live the way He lived, there is peace in Christ. He
Testing. What do you say, church? Amen. Amen. Now, my responsibility each evening is to bring to you some quizzes, some announcements, and some promotions, right? So every time you see me here, what does that mean? All right. So we're going to begin with our quiz. Now, for quiz time, I would like us to sing a little song. I'm going to teach it to you. One, two, three, four, riddle me this. One, two, three, four, riddle me that. One, two, three, four, riddle me this. One, two, three, four, riddle me that. Riddle me this, 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 riddle me that. We got it? Okay, let's try it together. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And riddle me, riddle me, riddle me, riddle me. And riddle me, riddle me, riddle me. Awesome. So, I am giving away a phone card for my riddles this evening. So I would like two brave volunteers to come forward. One youth and one youth at heart. Come quickly. One youth and one youth at heart to attempt my riddle for this evening. Let's go, let's go. I thought we'll be running up here by now. One youth, one, young, one adult. No one wants to take home my, my card. Oh. No one wants to take home my card. Thank you for being so brave. Do I have any adults who would like to attempt the riddles? Any adults? Wow. Any adult who would like to attempt? Don't forget, I know your names now. Okay. So to these brave young boys, the riddle for this evening is, what is there one of in every corner and two of in every room? Now, because, how old are you, Kaden? 11. 10, 10. Okay, so we have Kaden is 11, and what's your name there? Leonardo. Leonardo is 10. So because you're 11 and 10, I'm giving you one lifeline. So you can ask one adult in the congregation to help you out. So the riddle is, what is there one of in every corner and two of in every room? Who would you like to call on to assist you? Teacher Gordon, all right. So you could go by Teacher Gordon. Who would you like to call on to assist you? All right, go quickly. So I ha I'm giving you 10 seconds because <laughs> my time is short, right? So here's the riddle. What is there one of in every corner and two of in every room? All right, Kaden, you think you have the answer? What is the answer? Oh. Oh, okay. Leonardo, you think you have the answer? The same one. The same thing. Okay, so because the two of you were so brave and got the answer correct, I'm going to give you both my phone cards. Let's give them a round of applause. So every night I will be bringing you a riddle, and I am expecting some brave young men and women. Excuse me? Oh, oh, they said the answer, the letter O. Yes, they said the answer, the letter O. There is one O in corner and two O's in the word room. R-O-O-M? Yes. <laughs> yes, they said the answer. So every evening, I'm going to bring a riddle, and I'm expecting brave young men and women to come forward and make an attempt to answer, right? Now, do we have any guests in our midst? 
Any guest in our midst? I have another gift to give away. Come on up, sister. Come on up. <laughs> Put your hands together for her, church. <laughs> if you want, or I can come down to you. It's fine. Hi. Would you like to share your name with us? My name is Joycelyn Joseph Mason. Hi! hi. <laughs> I was invited by Nurse Murray. Nice! Nice to have you, Miss Joycelyn. My name is Tishana, and I was invited by my family over there. Awesome. Welcome, Tishana. So we are going to give these two books called The Great Controversy to Jocelyn and Tishana. So we hope to see you tomorrow, God's Fair Life, okay? So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to invite your friends, your families, your co-workers, as we all sit at Jesus' feet each night this week to soak in the messages that he has for us, right? So I have one more gift to give away, and it's an Amazon gift card. Now, for you to get this Amazon gift card, you have to tell me all eight points, or at least all eight points that was given by Pastor John yesterday. If you think you know all eight or six or five or four or even two, come forward, come forward. Wow, you see we have nice gifts to give away and nobody wants them. Come on, if you know at least one, at least one, come forward. At least one point. None? Come, sis, come, sis, come, sis. Okay, so you're going to tell us which point and what it is. Point number seven, you are afraid of people that are having nightmares about you. Awesome. What's your name? Josia. Yeah. So Josie's going to go home with my gift card, right? So just see Brother Ming right after the service for your Amazon gift card. Let's give a round of applause. So if you would like to win more of these gift cards, pay close attention to the sermon, and a gift card will be yours. Now this evening, do anyone know the topic for this evening? I don't have a gift card to give away, though. But <laughs> do you know the topic for this evening? Guilty pleasures beyond craving to calling. On Monday night is argumented reality beyond breaking to blessing. Tuesday is defiance beyond exile to excellence. And the big question is, who is the real MVP? If you would like to know who the real MVP is, you must come on Wednesday night. The real MVP beyond vice to virtue. And on Friday, unprecedented beyond past to purpose. And on Sabbath, outliner beyond damage to destiny. Each night promises to be a blessing. And as always, please share that blessing. I have one announcement to make. License plate M15575. You are parked in a wrong spot. You are kindly asked to remove your vehicle. License plate M15575. You are kindly asked to remove your vehicle. Hear the penny fall and listen when they fall. And for Jesus, he will last them all. Dropping, 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 hear the pennies fall. Everyone for Jesus, he will last them all. Beautiful, beautiful. We will now pick up our offering.
I will pray. Heavenly Father, God of abundance, our hearts are full with gratitude for those who give willingly and generously. We ask for your richest blessings to be poured out upon them, multiply their offerings, and use them to further your work. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
receive my receive my worship all of my worship all of my worship all of my worship is my worship all of my worship father we receive my receive my worship God is worthy tonight. Do you believe that God is able? Yes. Do you believe that He's also available here tonight? Yes. Uh, praise team. Praise team. This is our miracle moment where we believe God for a miracle. <laughs> Please. Uh, help me with this mic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our text comes from the book of Jude 24. Turn your Bibles here. This statement in the Word of God is a statement about God and about what he promises to do for us. Jude only has one chapter, verse 24. We're going to go to 25 as well. Now unto him who is what? To keep you from and to present you faultless before the majesty faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Let that settle a bit. Jude is saying two things here. He's saying God is able to keep you on the right track. Would somebody say amen? amen. Saying God is able to keep you clean. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from uh, the, 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 the grip of sin. He's able to break every stronghold. Then he says, and he is able to do what? Present you faultless. Doesn't mean that you come to him faultless now. Are we together? We have faults. Would somebody say amen? amen? But when his righteousness is imputed into you, your presentation before God is faultless. When God looks through him who is able to keep you from falling, and then he presents you in the presence of majesty, you are what? Faultless. Would somebody say amen? Amen. And so now I want to praise God because I know he's able to keep me on the right track. The Bible says he wills that we don't sin. But if we sin, there is a what? There is an advocate in heaven. Would somebody say amen? He's able to keep us right. But if we fall, amen. If the mic stops working, would somebody say amen? There is another mic. Would somebody say amen? The, he is able to present you faultless. Yes. I don't know what condition you came here in, but I need a God who can keep me. Yes. I don't know what type of life you've been living or what type of temptations you've been facing, but I need, for me to be kept, it's a miracle. Yes. I need a God to keep me. Yes. Anybody want to be kept on the right track? Yes. Anyone want the power of God in their lives? Anybody want God to just hold them up lest they fall? Yes. Amen. Sometimes I fail. Would somebody say amen? That's right. That's right. And I need a God that I could still come to. I could still come boldly before the throne of grace where I could receive mercy to help in what? Time of need. And so when I come to God, I want to be presented faultless. Is there somebody here today 
who wants God to keep them and to be presented faultless. Leave wherever you are. Just come to the altar. There is a miracle. Let me tell you something. There is an ICU, intensive care unit at this altar. If that's your desire, let's sing. As the day panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Let's sing that today. Those who are coming at the altar, just come straight up. You come up one or two steps. Let those come in at the back. The altar is small. Amen. Come, come, come. Don't be a fool. Let us come here. desire this, this is, is my
taking my sin, taking my sin, my cross, my shame. rising again. Rising again. I bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. You are my all in all. And as the text says, when I fall down. Worthy, worthy is you have a plan for our lives tonight. Worthy is your name. I want to ask, Pastor? Oh, amen. Your name, praise the Lord. His name is Worthy, His presence is here. We we'll ask Pastor Virgil Psalms to come. And offer that prayer, asking God for that miracle, that covering, that cleansing, that keeping, and that staying power. Pastor Sams. Let us, let us pray. Let us bow our heads. Almighty Father and our God, this evening we gather at this, at this place here this evening to acknowledge your presence in our midst. Amen. We are thankful that we have come from far and near to worship, to praise, and to adore your most holy name. Amen. As we come here this evening, Lord, we come as empty vessels longing to be filled. Yes. We ask that your Holy Spirit will tabernacle in this place and in our hearts yes, so that as we worship this evening, Yours, we can feel your, your presence, your, the nearness of your presence with us. We pray, Lord, that as your words go forth, that they will go forth with power, Amen. filled with the Holy Spirit, touching every heart, every boy, every girl, every young person here this evening. We pray, dear Lord, that there Amen. will be a transformation in the hearts of everyone here this evening. And that your name will be lifted up and glorified. We ask that you will touch your manservant one more time so that as he speak your word, that you will speak through him, hide him behind that cross, O oh Lord, so that as your words go forth, they will go forth with power, touching hearts of men and women, boys and girls. And we are thankful that you are well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. And so, Lord, into your hands we commit our spirit asking that you will touch every heart here this evening, that you will wrought a miracle in every heart, that you will bring about a transformation, that this moment will be a turning point in the lives of men and women, where hearts will be converted unto you. And we are thankful for the power of, your, of the gospel, Amen. that we are not ashamed of the power of the gospel. And as we stand here this evening, we, we surrender our all to you so that whatever is done, whatever is said, your name will be honored and glorified. Amen. We are thankful for having brought Pastor Terry John here to the Martin. And we are thankful for the way you are using him thus far. And tonight we know that there will be no exception. May your Holy Spirit move through this place 
so that whatever transpires, it will be because of the moving of your Holy yes, Spirit. Father, thank, you. thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. When I say okay, you say all right, okay? Okay? When I say all right, you say okay, all right? All right? We have come to worship the Lord, okay? And he has a word for us, all right? There is a blessing in store, okay? And we don't want to miss it, all right? As I speak tonight, okay? Beyond my voice, all right? God's voice will be speaking to you, okay? And he will be leading you into his plan, all right? Okay. And when he speaks to you, okay? Right. We must obey, all right? Okay. We must be changed, okay? Right. And never be the same, all right? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay now? All right now. Amen. We'll go whole night. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. He has given us this beautiful day. Amen. Wasn't it a lovely day in the friendly island of St. Martin today? Somebody say amen. Amen. You, you guys live where people pay to visit. Would somebody say amen? <laughs> they, they, pay, they pay hundreds of U.S. per night. Amen. To, to just to just enjoy the, the the beach that you don't want to go to hello somebody <laughs> am i speaking the truth hey you you guys you guys are living it you're living it up here amen and i'm happy to experience a piece of saint martin uh, i have been blessed amen since i'm here thank you for your hospitality for the for pastor sister sams for the youth uh committee amen for sister madisha and crew and company and uh there is a lady named magda hello somebody and this lady cook for you would somebody say amen your suits get too small good food in jesus name and and i want to hail up sister eleanor letang amen sister letang spent a year with me uh, at at cuc in 2001 2002 amen and good to see you in the house. Amen. It is a pleasure to be here tonight and God has given a word for our consideration. It's an, an important message for every human being. Amen. Now I want you to make a commitment to bring along anybody, young, old, but target the youth to bring them. Members of the church, non-members, these messages are for everybody would somebody say amen God has placed this message on my heart it's a solemn one an important one challenging one I would like to share it with you would somebody say amen shall we pray father as we enter your word bless our hearts transform our lives in Jesus name guilty pleasures is the topic tonight Guilty pleasures from craving to calling. There was a guy named Philip Markov. He was a medical student at the top of his class at Boston University. He was engaged to be married and had a promising future. He seemed to be one of the most eligible bachelors in all of Boston. But then he was having some private, a private life that did not match up with his public persona. Oh yes, a Philip Markov went and used Craigslist to meet women who subtly marketed erotic sexual services. 
And he proceeded to make a date with them, book an apartment with them, and there he would rob them and kill them. This model medical student turned out to be a monster known as the Craigslist Killer. Oh, how about this gentleman named Shimon Hyatt? He was from Shimon Hyatt. He was from Israel, but he lived in Europe. He pretended to be the son of a wealthy diamond magnet. And he would match on Tinder, hello somebody, with beautiful, rich women. And then he will proceed to take them on extravagant rendezvous, dates. He would rent a private jet and take trips over to Dubai over to the French Riviera and he would behave as if he has all the money in the world. But then he would fake a security crisis saying that his credit card cannot be used because his security was breached and then convince his lover to take out a line of credit in his name. Now we already showed that he has money, are we together? He has more money than her. He's taking on, on private jets and, and all this thing. And she says, listen, I, I will do it. I will get back my money. In fact, it's an investment to get more. Yeah. Only when she does it, he would withdraw all the money and disappear. And he would use some of that money to live a lavish lifestyle, to swindle and scam his next victim. Oh yes, this rich-looking bachelor, Shimon Hyatt, turned out to be the Tinder swindler. This pattern of destruction is not new. Would somebody say amen? It's not, is it new? This plot is not new. This follows the, the legacy of the father of lies. It follows the legacy of the swindler and killer original, the devil. His methods has always been through deception and seduction. Somebody say deception. And then what? Seduction. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know what? The thing about it, he doesn't use things that we don't like. He uses your weakness. He uses what gives pleasure. And so because sex is a gift from God and it is so pleasurable, where does the devil show up? Would somebody say amen? To use sex incorrectly. Uh, music is created by God for worship. Would somebody say amen? And to enjoy good experiences, it gives pleasure. The devil will use that as well. And the term guilty pleasures means that the things that we will be guilty of doing is also associated with the pleasure we want to have. Lord have mercy. You know, the problem with sin is that it is pleasurable. Hello, somebody. It's a good idea for us as sinners. Our hearts, instead of being repulsed by it, our hearts get excited by it. A temptation is a temptation because it is tap. Oh, yes, the battery is probably going. I probably touched it. I don't know. When Lucifer came into the garden, he didn't come as an ugly beast. He used the most beautiful creature, a flying creature at that time. The serpent was cursed to crawl on its belly. But before that, it was the most beautiful creature. And so he used that. He used the creature that could fly and dazzle in the sky. And when the sunlight hit that creature, it looked like burnished gold. According to Story of Redemption, page 32. 
He did not go upon the ground from place to place, but he flew in the air. And look at the devil. I'm sure he gave the most entertaining and enticing show. Hello, somebody. To catch the eye of that, 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 that woman who now was getting into a blind date with the devil. And then he began to speak. I could imagine the tenor in his voice. Would somebody say amen? That, 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 that Lucifer wasn't sounding. Imagine when he was in heaven, he would, he would speak and he would, have, he would speak in chords, sing in chords, in parts. I could imagine the way he called Eve's name. Adam had never called her name like that before. And she's there bedazzled, and now she's being deceived. The Bible says when she saw that the tree was good, and a tree to be desired by the eyes, and to make one wise, I will get promotion, I will be better, I will be wiser even than my husband, almost like God. Lord have mercy. When she saw that the tree was good, she took and she ate it. Deception is when you do something. Are we together? And you are fooled into doing it. That's what deception is. When you do it, you think it's right. Am I speaking the truth? But when you have done it, you realize you are wrong. That's deception. Anybody ever been deceived? Huh? When you put your money in this thing, hello somebody. <laughs> you were deceived. Uh, when, 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 this, when this guy spoke to you in the, and he, he shows all the nice words. Oh, not in St. Martin. Would somebody say amen? No deceiving men in St. Martin. Put your hands together for yourself. Amen. All the men speaking truth. Thank you very much. Not at all. <laughs> When, when, when this woman, you know, it goes both ways. When you took this job, you thought it was this, but it is not. You were deceived. But seduction is a different thing. Seduction, you know it is wrong. Are you following me here today? You know it is wrong. You taking it, you eating it, and you know it is wrong, but your body wants it. I know it will kill me, but I want it. If I don't have him, I will die. When you get him, you wish you were dead. That is seduction. Seduction, my friends. Uh, Eve was deceived. Are we together? Uh, she, he, she somehow came to the understanding that this fruit that God told her not to eat was to be desired to make her wise. She felt going against God. She was going for better. She was deceived. That's Eve. But let me tell you something. Adam was seduced. It's a higher level temptation. Hello, somebody. It was the, 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 the wrong fruit in the right hands. Lord have mercy. It was that fruit in the hands of a woman. I mean, there are beautiful women in the world today. After so many years of sin and deterioration. Could you imagine Eve? Coming fresh from the hands of God. Would somebody say amen? And, and she already naked. Hello somebody. And, and she... <laughs> That's what the Bible says. She was naked. What? And not ashamed. And she's coming and she has the fruit in her hand. The fruit in Eve's hand was Adam's seduction. Yes. You know, maybe the serpent wouldn't fool him. Are we together? The serpent looked like a flower in the air, flapping, talking. The woman, oh, this is so pretty. And she got deceived. But the, 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 what deceived the man was the fruit in the woman's hand. I could imagine her, Adam... Dum dum. <laughs> Adam, dum dum. And Adam couldn't resist that beautiful, perfect woman from the hand of God with all the right dimensions. Would somebody say amen? And this man decided if you die, I die too. 
And he plunged all of us. I say he. Would somebody say amen? I say he. I'm not, saying, I'm not blaming her. Amen? I know better than that. We have more women than men in the church today. Would somebody say amen? <laughs> but you see, the problem, my friend, is that many times we mistake presentation for personality. Many times what captures our attention are the cosmetics and not the substance. Yes. Many times what takes our attention is how it looks, the flair, the finesse. But not everything pretty is precious. Not everything that glitters is gold. Not everything, not every pleasure will provide lasting enjoyment. People have pleasure for five minutes and they have a lifetime of regret. Not all proposals, my friend, ladies, gentlemen, because ladies propose to gentlemen too. Would somebody say amen? And I have no problem with that. If my wife proposed to me, I would be happy. Amen? She, if she had proposed, would somebody say <laughs> But, but I, I'm more man than that. Would somebody say amen? amen? But not every proposal... <laughs> I have one, thanks. <laughs> not every proposal is an opportunity. Yes, not everything that comes your way is yours. Would somebody say amen? amen. We need to learn how to cut style. Amen? amen? Cut style on things that are not for you in Jesus' name. If he come behind you, would somebody say amen? And he's, and he's telling you sweet things, cut style on him. If he's not for you, would somebody say amen? Cut style on her. If God doesn't say yes, she's not for you. We need to understand that God has a plan, but the devil will offer a bargain. We will encounter people who are friendly, but in the end they will be deadly. Not everybody who smiles and laughs with you is your friend. Not everybody who follows you is your fan. There are dates with the devil too. The devil had set a date for Eve that she never believed would come. She wasn't ready for that foe that had a date in mind. He planned his approach. He planned his temptation. He planned her destruction. And there's a devil planning for you too. He wants to sabotage God's plan for your life. He wants to destroy you. He wants to crush you. So the Bible says, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say, my friend? The Bible tells us, in James chapter 1 verse 12 to 16, it says what? Blessed is the man that what? Blessed is the, or anyone who what? Endures temptation. Such a one will what? Will receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that... If you love God, would somebody say amen? You need to put God as your priority. And every test, consider your, the love for God. Verse 13, it says what? Let no man when he's tempted say, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be what? Tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. I spoke about tests yesterday that David, David, te not David, Gideon, tests God. He said, listen, if you want me to go, I want, give, put that fleece out. Are we together? And many times we, when God already say what he had to say, it's in the word. We want to ask God, give me a sign. But the sign done in the word. Are we together? God, you know, he, 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 he. He, he, he doesn't believe what I believe. But give me a sign if you, I'm the one who have to bring him to Jesus. God doesn't put the sign in the word. God doesn't tempt anybody with evil. And that goes for both men and women. I'm not bashing the men tonight. Would somebody say Amen. 
God cannot be tempted. God will not tempt you with evil. But verse 14, it says what? But every man when he is what? <laughs> when he's tempted, when he's drawn out with his what? Own lust and then enticed. I'm building a foundation. There is something in you the devil wants to exploit. Something he wants to work with to destroy you. And so he says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, Therefore, but be sober. Be vigilant for the adversary, the devil, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. My first point, I just have a few tonight. I don't have so many as yesterday. Don't allow your weakness to become the devil's stronghold. The devil wants to make your weakness his stronghold. He wants to use one thing in your life, one thing for your destruction. That's my first point. Go down to that on the slide. Don't allow your weakness to become the devil's stronghold. I changed the slide. Somebody said that, wake up. Don't allow. Continue going down. <laughs> Don't allow your weakness to become the devil's stronghold. Your relationship with God will not insulate you from the efforts of the devil. You need to make a decision that you will resist the devil. Would somebody say amen? There is a man in the Bible. His name is Samson. Judges chapter 14, verse 1 says what? He said to his mother what? I have what? I have seen a woman in Timna of the daughters of the Philistine. Now therefore, get her to me for wife. You know, Samson again, he was going based on presentation. Are we together? She was pleasing to the eye. He said, I have found a woman. This big, strong, strapping, handsome gentleman goes home to his mother and he says, I have found a woman. Uh, Biggs, the strongest man who ever lived, is now weak. Hello, somebody. For this woman he has found. I have found somebody. His mother saw the glimmer in his eye. His mother saw the pep in his step and the zip in his hip. And his mother looked at him and said, that His mother looked at him and said to him, verse 2, Is there never a woman from among the daughters of thy brethren? Listen to his mother's response. That sounds like a fed up mother. Are we together? It is not the first time Samson come and say he see a girl. Because his mother says, is there never a woman? <laughs> you always come into me with a girl you see. But you never come to me <laughs> with a good girl. Are we together? With a girl that I like for you. Would somebody say amen? With somebody that we know who is among our brethren who believe. Is there never a woman? <laughs> Samson, you again. There you go again. Going to Timnath. Now Timnath is, is many miles away. Are we together? It's about 30 miles away. It's far. But he found her. Would somebody say amen? And he brought, he wants to bring her home. Get her for me to wife. And what else? She said, is there never a woman from among your brethren? He said, no, no, that's what I want. Get her for me. She pleaseth me well. Now, when Samson said this thing, it's two things I'm thinking of. Are we together? Either she pleases I, <laughs> or she pleases his whole body. I don't, I don't know what activity Samson was in, but he liked what he see. He said, this is what I want. Everybody else disqualified. Don't bring no other woman in front of me. Get her for me. This, she pleaseth me well. You know, beware of pretty face and bad character. Yeah. 
because he's going on his senses. And, 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 and young people, yes, your senses are good because nobody don't want any spouse that don't please their eyes. Would somebody say amen? You want somebody who looks good, somebody who makes you feel the butterflies in your stomach. Would somebody say amen? But that is not all. The devil can make butterflies in your stomach too. So what pleases you? You have to ask yourself the question, what pleases you? Now if a man is, every time he talks to you, he's only telling you, listen, your hips, your lips, your fingertips. <laughs> if it's only about the physical, you know what he wants. Are we together? If a woman is only about, listen, you know, what you can buy for me. Hello, somebody. What you can do for me. You got to be wise. Adam was, I mean Adam, uh, Samson was strong. <laughs> I'm sure he was wise too, you know, because he judged Israel for 20 years. For 20 years. The judge of Israel was the pastor, the priest, the, 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 the governor, are we together? The judge of Israel was everything in leadership, including spiritual. But look at this church man now. Hmm. Hello, somebody. I'm telling you today that being in church doesn't stop your senses and your temptations and your craving. My second point, as I go quickly, because the time is flying, I go quickly, my second point, if you focus on the sensual, you cannot prosper in the spiritual. Whatever you feed will grow. If you're always on, on, on Instagram and on TikTok looking at women, uh, you will always have an overwhelming craving. If you always feed in ladies the sensual on men, you will always, we're talking about the flesh here, you know. Yes, sir. If your focus is on money, you cannot prosper in the spiritual. And so, we see that Adam, not Adam, Samson, Lord have mercy, gave a riddle and, and, and he was, he was going to get married to this woman. Actually, right there he gave the riddle and you know, these men went to plow with his heifer, he said. They went and tell the woman, listen, tell us the secret. Are we together? And when they told the, 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 the answer to the riddle out of the, out of, out of the, the eater came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they answered the riddle. Are you talking about the lion and the, and the bee? And so he left that woman. That, that relationship crashed. That was Judges 14. But in Judges 16, we see Samson again. Follow me here today. Where is Samson? Samson is in Gaza and he went to see a harlot. Right. The church boy, are we together? Yes, the one who was dedicated even before he was born, are we together? Yes. The one who knows God, the, the, that one is now in Gaza sleeping with a harlot and let me tell you something he probably thinks nobody knows he's there because that's what the devil has fooled you nobody will know nobody will see you far away you in Gaza the people of Israel will not know what you're doing in New York in the Netherlands what you're doing people wouldn't know but you know God knows and the people know too. <laughs> the people always know. <laughs> because you see, the Gazites know he's there. And Samson is inside of there. And the Bible says all night, well, he's the strongest man who ever lived. 
At midnight, he wakes up, he wakes up and he decides to, he, he decides the spirit of God. Imagine, in a harlot's house, the spirit of God speaks to Samson. Ellen White says he felt sorry for what he was doing. And at midnight, he decided to go. But you know what? The people of Gaza had already locked the gates because when the devil think he has you in a trap, he locking you inside. People of Gaza say, listen, he getting honey inside there, but when he come out, his sword in his skin. That's how the devil tries to trap us. Isn't that so? But when Samson comes out, he sees the, the, the Gaza men coming at him and the gates are locked. With the strength that God gave him, he holds the gates. He lifts up the gates. The gates hinges lift up the post of the wall. And he runs with the gates on his back all the way to the hill before Hebron. Now, when you look at the distance, it is 20 miles. There is no distance in... I try to say, listen, it's from where <laughs> to where? In St. Martin. This man reached Stacia. <laughs> Running. With the gates on his back. And that's the grace of God, my friend. And even when you're in mess, even when you, you, you're supposed to die and you deserve death, God still loves you. God still wants to give you a second chance. He still gives you power. He still gives you blessings. It also means that not because things are going right for you, it means that you are doing what's right. Because the blessings of God falls on the good and bad. If you're doing what is wrong and things are going right, repent. But don't take the blessings as a validation. Do not take God's grace for granted, my friend. His grace is there for you and me tonight. Would somebody say amen? When we get into the Gaza of our experience, we are in the depths of darkness and the Holy Spirit tells us, wake up, get up and run. You get up and run. And don't go back, my friends. Don't go back to Gaza. The Bible tells us he was, he was saved. But you know, again, the Bible says, the Bible says what? And what? What does the Bible say? And, and, and he found a woman in Sorek, whose name, <laughs> now we get that one name. Hello, somebody. But wait, wait, wait. Timnath, Gaza, Sorek, and that's what we know. In every area code, hello somebody. <laughs> you know something I don't know? <laughs> Deep inside of Sorek, he meets Delilah. <laughs> and let me tell you something, Delilah was sent do you know how Delilah met him in verse 5 of chapter 16? It says what? The lords of the Philistines came up to her and said, Entice him and find out where his great strength lieth and by what means we may overpower him and bind him and afflict him and every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Every one of us. Are we together? So imagine 30 men come. Are we together? Every one of us will give you 1,100. Jesus was only betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And that's after inflation and the value go down. <laughs> Samson was more expensive than Jesus. Each one of us who talk to you, woman, we will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Look, we put it in escrow right now. It's there. Ready for you. Ready to transfer. 
And this woman comes to Samson and say, Samson, tell me, where does your strength lie? <laughs> what, did they, what, did they, what did they ask her? Find out for me, where does your strength lie, one? Are we together? How we can bind him and afflict him. Are we together? And make him see misery. How she buy it is so she sell it. Samson, <laughs> tell me, where does your great strength lie? <laughs> And how can I bind you and afflict you? She has beauty but no brains. The same thing they tell you to do. It's the same thing you go and do. But who more stupid? Delilah or Samson? The woman tell you. She never lied to you. She tell you, Samson, tell me. How, where is the source of your strength? How can I make you weak as any man? How can I tie you up? How can I tie you up and make you see misery, Samson? How can I do you that? And Samson's still there. And we're laughing at him, but that's what sin is. Because we know exactly where we will go with the vice you are in, but you're still there. God warns you. The situation is warning you. You were in Gaza before. You faced death. You faced the, the, the sword many times. But you are still in your mess. We're laughing at Samson. But we are still mesmerized and stupefied by the same seduction. Many people, we know the, 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 the sexual immorality, we know where it will lead us. We know the pornography, we know where it will lead us. That's why we are called to follow our calling and not our craving. Now all that time, Samson in Sorek, he in Gaza. Are we together? Now he in where? He in Sorek, he in Gaza, he in Timna. Are we together? The man do have work to do. He's the judge of Israel. But instead of serving his calling, he is following his craving. And many times in our lives, we miss out on God's plan, his direction, the things he wants you to do, the things he wants you to accomplish and fulfill because we waste in time in our craving. Our assignments are undone. The due dates pass. We, we, we look at our lives and we are unhappy with it because God's calling is upon us. If we follow our calling, we will be satisfied. But we waste time with the craving and then we regret. But God is calling. But where is Samson? Where is Samson? Samson knows when he is with Delilah, I'm disobeying God, but I want it. I am neglecting my calling, but I want it. I am failing as a leader, but I... I am not fulfilling my assignment, but I want it. I am failing to destroy. I am destroying myself, but I want it. I am disappointing God, but I want it. I am performing far below my potential, but I want it. I should not be here in the lap of Delilah, but I want it. She will tie me up and make me see misery, but I want it. That's addiction, my friends. And we must understand that many people are addicted to things that are not narcotics. Many of us are addicted to sin. It has the same effect on our brain. Changes the structure of your brain and causes it to make pathways, automatic thoughts that place you in that same bondage. You know it is wrong, but you want it. You know why it will lead you, but you want it. I know she will destroy me, but I want it. I will repent after I get it, some of us say. A 
Samson is sacrificing his calling in the lap of his craving. Samson's eyes are blind long before the Philistines gouge them out. Beware of casual addiction. Beware of casual attraction. It can turn into addiction. The slight fantasies to sin can become your bondage. Do you know, let's talk about pornography. Every second, 28,000 people are watching pornography on the internet every second. Every second, $3,000 is spent on pornography. Every day, 37 porn films are created. And 25% of every internet search is for the lust of the flesh. As I close, I want to let you know that every temptation you delve into delves you deeper into temptation. Every departure from moral integrity blunts the conscience and opens the door for another temptation. Every time we compromise, we are open the, opening the door for greater compromise. But every time you stand up for Jesus, would somebody say amen? You are getting steps to stand up more. You see, sin is like a downward descent. Every time you go down, you have momentum to go down further. Momentum to go down further. You sow a thought, you reap, a, you, reap a, you reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. But there is an opposite direction. Would somebody say amen? You stand for Jesus once, you have the confidence to stand again. Would somebody say amen? You are sharpening your conscience. It's so sad that Samson fell prey to Delilah. What is your Delilah today? Samson, every time he's speaking, he thinks he's fooling Delilah, but he's getting closer to the truth. He's getting closer to the truth. He starts to talk about his hair. He's getting slow to... You see, sin has a slow fade. Until he tells Delilah, I am a Nazarite. And there was a vow before I was born that my mother should not put a razor upon my head. And if I contradict this vow, I will be weaker than any, any other man. Picture this, my friends, before I close. Every time he fools Delilah, he tells Delilah, if you tie me with ropes, she, she puts him to sleep. I don't know how she do that. I don't know if it's with food. I don't know. She puts him to sleep every time. Are we together? And he gets up, his hands tie. If you tie my hair, she puts him to sleep, he wake up, the Philistines are upon you, his head tie. He still told her the truth. It tells me that when you are in the presence of temptation and you don't flee temptation, you will do stupidness with yourself. As long as he's with Delilah, he's in the presence of temptation. For him to save himself, he has to leave Delilah. For some of you all to be saved, you'll have to leave. Separate yourself. Take yourself out of that. It's not helping you. It will hurt you. Cut it off. Beware of casual attraction. It can turn into addiction. He woke up. The Bible says that they gouged out his eyes. And they made him grind wheat like an ox. He lost his status, he lost his strength, he lost his sight. And everybody forget him now. Are we together? Do you know that the things that you love that will take you from God, when the devil has you, he takes it from you? 
What was leading him astray? His eyes. He liked to see the women. Are we together? When they're shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle, are we together? Samson going crazy. But he can't see them again. The things that you put before God will be taken from you. The Bible tells us that while he is grinding wheat forgotten, lost, the end of the story. No, the Bible says in verse 22, however, I love that word. Follow me here today, there's good news with Samson. However, his hair began to grow again after it was shaven. Would somebody say amen? The Bible didn't have to give us that detail. If the Bible gives us that detail, it means, my friend, that there is a plan. And I want to tell you my fourth point. You may have given up on yourself, but God has not given up on you. Move from your craving to your calling. Have a conversation with God. When you have a conversation with God, he will come and rescue you. Samson called upon the Lord. He said, Lord, remember me, I pray thee, and, and, and avenge me of my two eyes. And the Bible says when he prayed that prayer, God gave him that opportunity. Would somebody say amen? Have a little talk with Jesus. He will move you from your craving to your calling. I want to end by giving us some admonition. How do we succeed where Samson failed? Proverbs 4 verse 32, 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of them come the issues of the heart. Guard your heart, number one. Number two, guard your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 verse 5 casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalteth itself above the knowledge of God bringing it into subjection through obedience in Christ bring your cravings under the subjection of God spend time with the word Psalm chapter 119 verse 9 and 11 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? But by taking heed unto the word of God. Spend time in the word. He will give you strength. How thy word, the psalmist says, have I what? Hid in my heart that I what? Might not sin against thee. Focus on noble thoughts. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, lovely, of good report, and virtuous, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Praise team, come up, please. Simply means that the battle over your guilty pleasures are won in your mind are we together when you place the temptation in subjection to the word of god there's a fight going on in our hearts and minds tonight there is a battle raging the battle can only be won when we close the door to temptation, we don't focus on the sensual. We focus on the spiritual. Whatever you feed will grow. If you feed the flesh, the flesh will grow. But if you feed the spirit, the spiritual will grow. Feed yourself on the word of God. Spend time in prayer. He can change your nature. He can transform your heart. He can save you from peril. He can give you a bright future. Tonight somebody wants to say, I want to crush my guilty pleasures. I only want pleasures forevermore that God has for me. You don't want pleasures that make you guilty. You want pleasures that make you happy. Is anybody here you want to say that tonight? 
Wave your hands wherever you wave your hands wherever you are. Wave your hands. If you're serious about holy pleasures, happy pleasures, stand to your feet wherever you are. Stand, stand up. Jesus is calling. Stand up to your feet. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness. Was but when the precious blood. The precious blood. Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, it has. Amen. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today. Tonight, I want you to make a decision to leave behind the lifestyle of bondage. The habits that doth so easily beset you. The sin in your life that threatens to destroy you. In your mind, I want you to make a decision. The blood of Jesus is available, my friends. And the blood has not lost its power. Is there somebody here who wants to say, Lord, I just want cleansing. I want to pray for you. I just want those things that race in my mind, that have me bound to my habits and my ways and my pleasures I want you to just not just press pause press stop I want you to cancel my addiction tonight it may be to a substance like alcohol or marijuana it may be to an action of sin. I don't know what it is. It may be a connection with somebody who is leading you in the right, in the wrong direction. It may be a destructive entertainment pattern. I don't know what it is, but you have been hooked for many years. You know you are going down. And you want to cancel the effects of that burden on your life maybe pornography it may be something that people look at as little like a lie or lying it may be pride it may be selfishness but you want to say God create in me a clean heart and renew an upright spirit within me and so tonight we want to pray for you that God will break every chain he will destroy every stronghold the strongest man in the world had a strong weakness the strongest man who ever lived samson was bound by chains he could not break but god can break those chains tonight and say lord deliver me leave wherever you come to the altar as we sing the last stanza of this come come to the altar come now Oh, what a savior we have heard a joyful song Jesus saves Jesus saves spread the like gladness all around Jesus saves Jesus saves come on come on there is a breakthrough there is a miracle there is deliverance right here older ones oh what a 
Savior. He can save. He's able to save. Maybe some music that you want to be delivered from. He's able to save. Today we want to place our lives in subjection to God. And I want to pray for every two other sets of people, every visitor. You came here tonight and I know it's not by chance. And sometimes when the preacher preaches, we think that, hey, uh, uh, you know, I am, am I the target? I don't know anything about anybody in here. But I just know that God loves you. The devil wants to destroy you. But there is a savior tonight who can rescue you. And so every visiting friend, every member who wants to say, I have issues. There are some things I want that I have the desire for, I have the taste for. I want God to cancel in my life. There are some things that just catch me away. May not be the sin of Samson, but it is a stronghold that affects you. Every visitor who wants prayer, come. Come before I end. If you want special prayer, you come. Every member who wants special prayer, come. God is calling, He's moving and stirring in this place. I believe, I believe that tonight there are many people who will have a brighter future because of the breakthrough that God will give them tonight. Your life will be at peace. Your heart will have more joy. All the voices that was crowding you, all the cravings that were pulling you from here to there. God will give you control over your life. Would somebody say amen? There are some of us, many times we, we wonder why we are always going, why we are always panting after this and panting after that. But when God steps in, my friend, he brings sanity. He brings clarity. He brings objectivity. And there is somebody here tonight who just wants that peace that passeth all understanding. The rush of all the stimulation and the cravings upon your heart and mind. Have you depressed? Have you suppressed? Have you frustrated? But you want God to turn on the light in your darkness tonight. And he will do it for you if you have faith to believe and to obey my friend in the back come I don't know who you are but God is saying you are there and I want you to be part of this prayer come young lady step to the altar as I pray father the hour is late but we are here for something of eternal significance. These moments in your presence would make every moment of the future much better. Father, we pray that the presence of your Holy Spirit will touch every soul. Many have been struggling and wrestling and fighting. They have been tossed to and fro some are harassed by demons and some are oppressed by the presence of the enemy he has cast dark shadows over their lives 
he has affected their minds but we so glad tonight that you can renew every mind tonight and so father touch every young person everybody at the altar and renew the minds of your people let your glory enter their minds let your holy spirit communicate with their minds may they hear your voice clearer than ever before may you bring clarity to their thoughts and father may that glory transform them not only their thoughts but their visage their, their, their facial expression their dress and everything will this demonstrate your deliverance tonight father break every chain break every stronghold separate your people from their sin cast it into the depths of the ocean may they remember it no more after living Gaza after living Timna after living Sorek may they never return again oh God we pray heavenly father that everything in the lives of your people will be cleaned out send your Holy Spirit cover us with your blood blanket the atmosphere may this sanctuary represent you your precincts and may every soul that you have created find deliverance find hope find a brighter future let your glory be present in each life and may we go forth from here into the other hours of the night and tomorrow with a brand new more glorious experience with strength to overcome the strongholds we thank you we claim it in the name of jesus let god's people say amen and amen god bless you What do you say, church? Yes. Certainly we want to say thanks to God for the way he has used his manservant this evening. I want you to know tomorrow evening will be no different. Let us invite as many as we can so that they too can enjoy the blessings that God has in store for all of us. Uh, just before we have our benediction, I just want to, on behalf of the church, to express condolences to the Samuel family who have lost Ella Samuel, who uh, he's lost his brother today, um, Dolphy Samuel. And we certainly express our deepest condolences to him and his family. And let us keep them in our prayers as well, as they mourn their loss. Of course, you know, as a church, as a family, whenever one suffers, we all feel the pain. And so we mourn with them in this their moment of loss. Also, um, for those of you who were at the cold bay yesterday with um, Brenda Walsh, she has, she, there are still some books that are available, some uh, devotions. Uh, for those of you who desire to have devotions, you can always see Sister Sam's. Let us all stand for the benediction. Dear Lord, once again, we are thankful for the way you've used your manservant. And we are thankful for the illustration. We are thankful for that which was imparted to us. And help us, Lord, that we will not be like Samson, but that we will be committed and obedient to you at all times. That we will remain faithful and steadfast so that we will be used as instruments in your cause. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we look forward to see you again tomorrow evening. And make sure you bring along someone with you as you come tomorrow evening for another outpouring of God's Spirit. God bless you, and do have a pleasant evening. Many people come from all over the globe and flock to your country for a wonderful experience. This time, God has an experience for you. Oh yes, I am happy to be your guest speaker for your Mega Youth Revival Series, Early Day. And I am Pastor Terry John from the University of the Southern Caribbean, Senior Pastor of the University Church. And I am here to let you know that your current situation is not your final destination and that God's plan for you is beyond the orbit of your imagination. And so, young people, come, let's get motivated so that the Word of God can elevate us. Our faith and our future is assured with Jesus. Come, experience worship, the power of the Word. Express yourself in the presence of God as God takes you beyond your fear to your future, beyond your craving to your calling, beyond the breaking to your blessing, from your vice to your virtue, and beyond your past to your purpose. Come on, you cannot miss it. God has a plan and a future for you. Let us be there, March 23rd to March 30th. Let us elevate.